Hello, this is Spiderbot. It's a hexapod. Uh, it's a six-legged walker, maybe it should be Antbot, and it's been built with an ESP8266 and an Adafruit server controller. So if you've seen my last video, I actually put it together. It's Wi-Fi capable and it's programmed using MicroPython. So in the last video, like I said, I built it and tested it and the code only had the basics. There are parts hanging off of it. So uh, in this video, we're going to make it walk. I started by building some test patterns where I'm picking up one leg at a time. I did this originally using Explorer, but I found that quite unreliable for MicroPython. Then I've decided to continue using the Web Ripple. Now, the Web Ripple has a few tricks worth knowing. First is to use Control E, which allows you to then paste blocks of code. Okay, I'm using an editor to edit the blocks of code I'm going to work with. Then you copy that onto your copy buffer. Then you Control E, then A, then V to paste, then D. However, it will truncate pasted code if you paste too much at a time. So more than about four lines and it goes. So just be aware of that. Um, you definitely want to make yourself helper functions. You can upload files, but annoyingly to reload a module you've just you've already imported, um, you'll need to upload it again and then you'll need to reset the ESP. <sighs> right. Um, so I've been getting these servos going into crazy positions and I think it's because at this point all of this stuff is flapping in the breeze and it looks like the pins on the back of the uh, controller here may, may have made contact with these bolts. Jonathan was asking what is capped on tape and why have I used it? What's this funny yellow tape? Well I've stuck it to the bottom of these because they were touching on to some of the bolts on this while it was moving and when they caught onto the bolts they uh, cause the robot to go a bit crazy. What it does, it's got, it's got many properties, but one of them is it stops electricity getting through. Where the electricity gets through a shorter place than it should, so it's called a short circuit. So this tape, you put it on the bottom here, and it stops you getting short circuits. So that's why we've used Capton tape, so we don't get short circuits, so we don't get mad robot. Yeah. Jonathan, you had a question. What's this? This is double-sided tape, and we're going to use this to stick the uh, boards onto the robot securely. Uh, let me see. And I've used some double-sided foam to go and stick the two boards on top of the servos like this, which will do for now. I mean, it's not going to stay forever. I've also tidied up the wiring using some of the junior jumper jerky for the shorter connections, and had to go and do some testing again. I had a little bit of this wire gatherer still hanging around and I used it here to gather the two power cables. And I've also then just used a bit of masking tape around the back. That's a five volt, five amp potential source for the servos and USB power from uh, a brick over here. This is now ready to roll. Building on what we had last week, we've got the SpiderBot module, which I've modified a little. So first I've made stuff into this little init function and that has got the position of the legs. Now I've made those modifications I had to for after I'd rewired it. And that returns you the left side and the right side grouping of legs with this inversion here that we need to make sure we know which side we're on. Uh, this neutral, which returns every leg to the 90 degree mark, which I consider the neutral position. And it has a true or false to say whether to leave the motors attached or detached. So if I go neutral but leaving it as default, it'll go neutral and then it'll relax again because the motor's disconnected. If I say neutral false, all the motors are now going to their 90 degrees position, kind of ready for action. I then have a function called crouch, which goes and lifts all the legs up and then goes and releases them so it kind of drops to the floor, which gets it just to sit down. That one's enough for people to kind of see, right, this is active, each motor is independently controlled. I've then got functions to go and test each of the motors. So this is putting each foot up, then down, and then if you run knee test, again the same with the knees, and the hip test again, it goes one way, back to neutral, the other way, back to neutral. Foot test. And you notice that as soon as this took the weight off, it leaned forward terribly. So maybe once I've got batteries in, it will balance out better, but right now the balance is awful. This cable doesn't help. 
this is a lighter board up front than the board at back, so there will be some balancing to be done, maybe in a subsequent video. So if I do foot test right, and that's all the feet. Knee test left, and this is where you can see that we have to be a little bit careful when we start doing our gates because it loses balance quite easily, at least on this front part here. It's not balanced anyway, so if I do the right again, so you can see those work, and then we'll do hip test left. This one is iffy. This one does not like to go into a forward position. Um, at least it doesn't when it's down. So this one is clearly a weaker knee uh, hip than some of the others. So I realise that not all of these servo motors are equal and we may need to balance that later, but it'll do for now. Now this allowed me to make sure I had all of the wiring right and I knew which position I was talking about. The next one I did, I had some idea on the train that I should use sine wave for something. So I created, and I'm hoping it's going to go the right direction, a crab gate. So I could thought I could send a sine wave to each one and get some interesting behaviour. As I get a crab movement sideways, because I'm not doing anything with the hips. So two groups, knees and feet. The groups, you've got left side, right side, left side, and then right side, left side, right side. So these are two groups of three. And here I'm calculating the positions for those groups. So 90 degrees is being neutral plus, now we've got to make it an integer, we want the sine, we want it in radians of some variable theta. So theta is just incremented here in this while loop. Uh, so it's plus equal whatever this direction speed is. Uh, it gets looped at 360, so that continues to loop. So if I say crab, and I can't remember which way this is going to go. Uh, is it going to go towards me? It's going to go towards me, hold on. Let's do crab direction equals minus one. Let's go towards the ca camera. You'll notice again, you see it's listing forward badly. Actually, if we do minus one, it would go the other way and we've seen that. Uh, however, it will then never quite loop here. So there's an interesting thing where it'll just get bigger and bigger till we get an overflow. Um, now I can actually speed this up because of the direction parameter. And this code is all going to be on GitHub, as always. Knees are exactly theta. The feet are theta plus 90 degrees, so a quarter of a turn away. The other knees are 180 degrees, so the exact opposite position. And then 270, which is equivalent of minus 90. And we multiply all of those by 30. So the actual movement is by 30 degrees from 90. Uh, and then here we're just moving all of these groups outwards. We can make it much faster. that there I mean I might have to mess with that it may need tuning but that's a crab gate definitely and the next gate I worked on is what I call the leg by leg so leg by leg is kind of like a spider move it's not particularly efficient it basically well have a look at it so this is leg by leg so each leg is moving forward so it's lifting up its knee but it's placing itself down and then they're all pulling forward together. Now I've had to tweak timings and there is a timing parameter for positioning each part of each servo. There's also a timing parameter for the smooth movement at the end. As you can see by the actual movement, we're doing a pattern, left side leg, right side, left side. So we're doing the first group, the second group, the third group, leg by leg, like it says. We lift the knee up, we lift the, bring the hip forward, we put the knee down. And we do that for all the legs in the pattern, and then we sweep the whole robot back. Now that last sweep at the end, where they pull forward, I had to actually do that as a smooth movement. And it's doing that because if we move directly from here to there, the robot would crash head first. So we had to slow this bit down. Now you'll notice that's being pulled to one side, and it's not to do with this cable, I think. If I put it up here, you can kind of see what it's doing. And it definitely wants to pull to this side. There's no direction, there's no IMU in this. This is just purely moving in one way. And I haven't got it so I can do any turning yet. So I suppose the next gate to really consider is could I do three legs at a time? Now I'm slightly worried about three legs given how much it lists and how much trouble it's struggling when one leg is in the air. 
So if three legs are in the air, is it just going to fall over? The ant gate is to lift one set of feet, move them forward, the other set of feet move them forward, and then bring the whole lot forward. So I'm going to tell it to do what uh, knee positions up, and then I'm going to get it to sweep one set of legs back and the other set of legs forward, so in groups of three, then put one set down, lift the other set up, and then back and forward. This is getting fairly complicated now. I've got this idea of a move group where um, I'm moving a group of legs and I'm saying I'm either moving, well, moving the hip, foot, knee with a delay afterwards, so it moves all of these legs together and all of their positions together. So I've created the groups and it's same patterns actually as crab gate. So left, right, left, and right, left, right. Put the first group up, so knees up, and we wait at uh, whatever the, the positional delay here is. And then we start sweeping. So this is the same kind of sweeping as we saw in the leg by leg group, but now we're moving group one, going forward, group two, going backwards. This is the ant pattern. Okay, whoop, the cable got stuck. And then we wait this little smooth delay speed. So again, we get this smooth movement. Put group one down, bring group two up. So knees, what, knees down here, knees up here. And then we sweep the other way. So now we're going group two is going forward, group one is going back. Swap them, knees down, knees up, and start the sweep again. Now this sweeps back to the neutral position, so this can start from the neutral position. So actually, when it hits this, it should be in the neutral position and then moving backwards. Now this is far more effective than the spider pattern was. Oh. And it's still turning quite a lot to the left. I don't know if that, oh, that might be me with this cable. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's plenty frisky, that is. <laughs> Now, it's an interesting position there where I've kind of just control C to stop, but you can kind of see it. Oh, what was that? Oh, they're getting jammed on each other. Is that because the knees are going too far back? Hips range, I'm gonna, I had it at 30. I'm gonna try 25 for a slightly less range so they're not colliding because they looked like they were colliding. It didn't really appear to be stopping it, but it's probably not good for these servos. I'm trying to parameterize, parameterize much of this so it's easier to uh, manipulate and change things. And this bit I've not parameterized enough, so it's gonna be a reset to reload that function. From Spiderbot Demo, import star. So Spiderbot Demo, and you'll see it in the GitHub, has got all of these gates that I'm experimenting with. This gate is the ant pattern. So this should mean they're colliding less. You can kind of see that gate from below there. Just make sure nothing here is getting hot. So I'll be honest and say I'm a bit worried about the current over these little jumper cables for the, uh, the servos because these are getting a little bit toasty. So we may have to watch out for current on those. It's not horrific, but it's alarming enough that that's warm and that's probably because these pull enough current that that little tiny wire isn't really enough for it. Maybe what I need to do, well, when I get down to it, I'm probably gonna have batteries powering this board separately from this board. And we'll say amp pattern hips range equals five. That's basically just dancing. So hip range equals 20. Oops, falling off the side. We've gotten it to walk forward reasonably reliably. It kind of pulls left a bit and it's uh, all tethered. And I think we're going to leave it there because I get the feeling getting it to go backwards and getting it to turn are going to be much bigger challenges. If you've enjoyed this video, first thing is all the uh, code is on GitHub for this. So you can use the code if you want to try and experiment with gates yourself. If you love what I do, please support me on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Orion Robots. 
subscribe to me to see more of these videos and you can also help with translations and transcriptions so see the link below to help with that and give me a thumbs up if you liked it you can leave any comments or questions below i'll try and respond to as many as i can go make stuff and be awesome bye